Hey guys, welcome to Break It Yourself. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing the DJI Osmo Action at Walt Disney World. I do wanna set some expectations here because this is an action cam. I don't expect great low light performance or microphone performance. And I was using two Osmo Actions. A friend of mine lent me one and I had it set up on this rig. So all the footage you see side by side, it will be from this rig in order to give us the best comparison possible. So the first thing I wanted to show was rock steady on versus rock steady off. So on the left side, you have rock steady on and it's just incredibly smooth. And this is the same rig, okay? And then rock steady off on the right side, which is kind of shaking around everywhere. But you can see that when you have rock steady on, it has to crop in on that image so that it can then digitally stabilize the image. I also didn't notice any color differences between Rocksteady on and off or any issues with low light between Rocksteady being on or off. For the most part, the images looked exactly the same. It's just that the Rocksteady was zoomed in ever so slightly. So now that we've seen the difference between Rocksteady on and Rocksteady off, we're gonna go into using Rocksteady, but playing around with the resolution and also the frame rate to do some comparisons to see if we're in 4K, 60 frames a second, if that kind of degrades the Rocksteady ability versus using maybe 2.7K, 1080p, or even 4K at 24 frames a second. So here we have 4K at 24 frames a second on the left, Rocksteady's on in both cases, and 2.7K at 24 frames a second on the right. I've watched this footage a bunch of times and I really can't tell that much of a difference. I, it could just be my eyes playing tricks on me. I think that maybe the 2.7K is a little bit better, but let me know what you think. I, to me, the colors are exact. The amount of stabilization looks almost identical to me. Like I said, maybe a slight lean to the 2.7K, but I can't see anything major. So maybe I'm missing something. Let me know what you see. So far, my assumption seems to be totally wrong and that the lo a lower resolution and lower frame rate would have more processing power to be able to take care of the image stabilization. But these just look so similar. Swapping the video on the right to 1080p, and I have to admit in this one, I do see a bigger difference. It's not very dramatic, but the 1080p to my eye is a bit smoother than the 4K. In the 4K, I think you can see my steps a little bit more, so you see kind of the bouncing up and down as I walk, and then 1080p seems to be able to smooth that out just a little bit more. So I think my assumption in what the processor is doing is correct although I don't think it's that dramatic, that big of a difference, I think I would still go with 4K. Okay, so next test is gonna be low light, and I wanted to see if the processor being eaten up by frame rate and resolution made a difference in low light. So here you can see 4K, 60 frames a second. The white balance is much different and the image much dimmer overall than the 1080p at 24. And that might just be because the frame rate is quicker, so the shutter has to be quicker. Here you have 4K, 24 frames a second on the left, 1080p, 24 frames a second on the right, and the images look much more similar. And I don't know if it's my eyes playing tricks on me, but to me, the noise doesn't look quite as bad in the 1080p but that's probably just because the resolution isn't as good as the 4K. And now swapping to Osmo Audio. Uh, right side is an auto, left side is 4K 24 frames a second at 150th shutter speed. Left side, ND filter, ND, ND 16, ND 16. So this I was not expecting at all. As I just said, on the left side, we're using an ND filter with a manual shutter speed, auto ISO, we're using ND 16. And on the right, it's 4K, 24 frames a second, everything's in auto. Rocksteady is actually on in both of them, but the one with the 150th shutter speed is just horrific. I was not expecting this at all. So the colors are slightly different, but the Rocksteady just is awful. So 
I initially was thinking maybe this has to do with the shutter speed. So let's bump both to 4K at 60 frames a second. We'll use our ND filter on one and auto settings on the other. Right side, 4K 60, auto, left side, ND filter, 4K 60, one one twentieth of a second shutter speed. And unfortunately, as you can see, the side that has the one one twentieth of a second shutter speed and the ND filter, the Rocksteady just looks like garbage compared to when everything is in auto. So something's going on with the Rocksteady and when the shutter speed is very, very low. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Um, I think the colors are actually a bit better with the ND filter. But again, this is an action cam and it's probably designed to just use everything in auto so it can adjust for you. So I just wanted to show you that you should not use an ND filter if you plan on using this with Rocksteady with a bunch of movement because the ND filter just pretty much eliminates the whole purpose of Rocksteady. With that said, I really do like the Osmo Action a whole lot. I like having the screen on the front side. I think it's a great action cam. I think Rocksteady works incredibly well. I love the fact that it can shoot at 4K, 60 frames a second with that Rocksteady on and you can just get an awesome image. Overall, I highly recommend it, especially for the price because it's cheaper than the GoPro. Again, it's an action cam, so the low light is not great. But overall, I highly recommend it. So if you're interested in one, I'll link in the description below to where you can find them on Amazon as well as DJI's site. Thanks so much for watching Break It Yourself. I really, really appreciate it. As always, don't forget to thumbs me up, and we'll see you next time.